Hello, hola, and shalom. And if you're watching this on a Saturday, Shabbat Shalom. I'm Rebellia, and we are back with another episode of Nancy Drew. Now, I have to apologize for not uploading Minecraft on last Friday. Uh, I made the recording for both Friday and Wednesday, but the problem was my editor or my uh, recording messed up to where the video feed had actually froze. And so you were looking at a picture like what you're looking at right now. But you wouldn't see me moving the mouse or moving my character around. So the audio was fine, but the video was horrible. So I didn't think you guys would want to see that, and I didn't want to upload that anyway. I believe I've fixed the problem now, so we're going to continue with Nancy Drew. I am going to be starting a Don't Starve series on Wednesday with my husband. It's going to be a co -op, uh, collab series, co-op series, whatever you want to call it, uh, with uh, Salkalin Gaming. Or I think his channel is Cheetah Gaming, something like that. I believe it. No, the Gaming Cheetah. That has to be it. So <laughs> anyway, I'll leave, uh, leave a link to in the description for his channel on that episode, and then we'll be continuing our Minecraft series on Friday. So let's continue with this. Uh, we had just gone back to our room. I want to check out this laptop. Oh, Togo! I forgot she had that little dog. That almost looks like a pit bull puppy or something. I don't know. Never knew what that was. Okay, Dad's friend Franklin Rose asked me to volunteer as an assistant curator at the Beach Hill Museum. Museum is preparing. Okay, yeah, we already know all of this stuff. Oh! No, this is like a rundown of what's going on. Oh, cool! Okay, met my boss, Joanna Riggs. Showed me the museum's prized possession. Uh, temple. The key card door locks should work if all the of the level's activities were solved. Don't forget to put my card in to get credit for my work. The logo graph number exhibit is missing some pieces. Need to find them. I've already found one out of two. Uh, met art dealer Taylor Sinclair, who helps the museum purchase artifacts. Concerned about the museum, should go talk to him at his office. Oh, this is really neat. Uh, I'm at the museum's ep epigrapher, uh, Maya language specialist, uh, Henrik van der Heun, uh, working on translating the inscriptions on the monolith, the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center's number is this. Why is everyone's phone prefix is 555? <laughs> Oh, that's just standard, because there is actually no real number with 555 in the middle like that. Uh, need to bring papers about the monolith to the Mexican consulate. Be sure to check in with Bess and George. Okay, so let's go ahead and X out of that. Let's get off of this. And, okay, there we go. And let's check in with Bess and George. Five, 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 four, four, six, eight. Hello? Hey, Bess. It's me, Nancy. What's new? It's pouring rain. George and I are in the middle of a heated game of Go Fish, and I'm winning. Don't believe a word she says, Nancy. <laughs> Last hand, I made mincemeat out of her. Anyway, we don't want to make you homesick. How's the internship going? So far, so good. There's a lot of excitement about the upcoming exhibit, especially since we have the Palenque monolith. The who? The monolith. It's a giant block of stone recently excavated from a cave near Palenque in Mexico. Apparently, it's a very big deal. They think it's 1,500 years old. So, have you seen it? This, uh, monolith? Yeah, it's humongous. Must weigh a ton. Like how big? As big as... A refrigerator? Maybe Bigfoot's refrigerator. Sorry, Nancy, but how would a person tell this monolith apart from, say, some other big rock? Well, for one thing, it has Maya glyphs carved into it. Glyphs? Pictures that represent words or ideas, also known as logographs. Joanna says the glyphs might be a message from King Pakal. What kind of message? We don't know yet. Henrik Vanderhuhn, Beach Hills epigrapher, is working on a translation. Who was King Pakal? 
He's considered one of the great Maya rulers. He reigned at the height of the Maya civilization. Well, Nancy, you're sounding very curatorial. Very curatorial indeed. We've been worried that you would be a little bored without a mystery to solve, but it sounds like your brain will have plenty to chew on. The whole Maya culture is a mystery to me at the moment. The last thing I'm going to be is bored. I'm sure of that. Speaking of kings, this card game's not over yet, Bess. Yes, well, I hope you've got plenty of bait for your fishing pole, dear cousin. Okay, you two. <laughs> I'll call back later. Call back soon. Yeah, and good luck. Wow. Okay. So we've got that all done up. Let's go ahead and we will switch this. Okay, alarm. Let's go with 7 a.m. Set that. And that way, first thing, we can go over to the Mexican consulate and give him those papers. Okay, it doesn't look like the same thing we need to mess with. Alright, now let's see. Mexican consulate, let's go here. So he should be here now, and we can go and do that real quick. over here first. Always want to check everything out. All right, information for art collectors, dealers, and curators. Establishing legal provenance is your, it's your duty. A work of art may travel great distances and change hands many times during the course of its lifetime. Typically, legal transfer of ownership happens either as a sale, an inheritance, or a gift. Province documents are an important means of establishing an artwork's authority or authenticity, sorry, as well as confirming the legality of its ownership. They show the ge geographic, personnel, and commercial route of a work of art. That is, they identify the date of each exchange, the names of the people involved, the circumstances of the transfer, and the location where the transaction was taking place. Ideally, an unbroken chain of ownership can be traced all the way from the artist's workshop to the present day. Frequently, though, some documents are missing. The art dealer or museum curator has no way of knowing how the artwork has been exchanged during these gaps in the record. When this is the case, the legality of present-day ownership becomes suspect. When researching an artwork's provenance, the following documents may provide clues. Okay. Alright, well, interesting. Is that all we can look at? Looks like it. Anything else? Does not look like it. Alright, here How we go. How may I help you? Right. Hi, I'm Nancy Drew, the new deputy curator over at Beach Hill. So, you're Joanna Riggs' newest pirate in training. How does it feel to join the ranks with the modern day conquistadors? What? I beg your pardon? I beg your pardon, but how does a deputy curator become a pirate in your book? You had better brush up on your history, young lady. When the Spanish explorers invaded Mexico, they became known as the conquistadors or conquerors. They robbed the indigenous peoples of their wealth, not just their gold, but their artwork, their sacred objects. Anything they did not steal, they burned to the ground. I don't understand that many crimes were committed in the name of exploration. That's hundreds of years ago. Okay. And you ran modern day art collectors or something that happened long before we were born. Uh, that's a good question. Do you blame Joanna and modern day art collectors for something that happened long before they were born? There is more. In the 19th century, archaeologists discovered the ruins of ancient civilizations predating even the Aztecs. Many of the dig sites were robbed, and the stolen artifacts were sold off to art museums and collectors around the world. Today, finally, it is illegal among most civilized nations to remove an artifact from its native country. But sadly, there are thousands of precious antiquities with highly questionable provenance floating around the Western world. But Joanna only wants to display this artwork, to celebrate it. 
so the public will be able to enjoy it and learn about your people's great talents and achievements. If the American public wants to see our art, they should come to Mexico. Is there any way to identify the stolen artifacts? An artifact's provenance is the story of its origin and ownership. For example, how it made its way from a temple at Chichen Itza to a museum in Washington, D.C. If the artifact's provenance reveals that it has been stolen, then that artifact must be returned to the country of its origin. Then the relics at Beach Hill must all be legitimate, right? No, not at all. Provenance documents are often tampered with or forged to cover up the theft. Because of this, thefts continue and a great deal of art is moved on the black market, even today. Unethical art dealers and greedy museum curators do nothing to stop this. Oh, good grief, man. Uh, I mean, I understand stuff like this happens, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to bash him, but my gosh, you know, the, the majority of people are actually trying to do this legally, not illegally, and he's making it sound like it's the opposite way around. Uh, so she's involved. Dealings. Are you suggesting Beach Hill is involved in these kinds of misdealings? If Joanna Riggs or that overstuffed pillowhead Sinclair had any decency, they would take measures to see that all Maya artifacts were returned to Mexico at once where they belong. And what if these measures are not taken? My country will have its due, Nancy, even if I have to begin reclaiming its artifacts with my own two hands. I admire your conviction, Alejandro. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Palenque monolith is only here on loan from Mexico. I am still not happy that such a rare find will have its debut exhibition on American soil. But in my country, too, there are people for whom money talks. I will take those documents now. Yep. Thank you. I have some business with Joanna at the museum later, so I will return the contract to her then, after I have looked it over. Okay. Are you sure? I don't mind waiting. You may consider your mission accomplished. Okay. Well, uh, okay then. Goodbye. That's kind of weird. All right, let's get out of here and let's go over to Taylor and see what he has to say. Bans, he wanted us to meet him at his office to talk to us. Apparently he doesn't trust talking to us at the museum. So maybe there's somebody crooked at the museum. It's about time. Oh, my fears are like maggots infesting my poor old carcass. Want a cookie? They're from Oaxaca. Oh. Oh, thanks. I'm not hungry anymore. Uh... No, thank you. You said Beach Hill is in jeopardy. I need to know why. The art world is being ransacked, Nancy. Prudence Rutherford, a major patron of the arts, had her fire ruby necklace stolen from her villa in Topeka. Really? Two weeks later, a whole display case full of rare Maya artifacts was heisted from a museum in New Mexico. Uh-oh. Do you think there's a connection between the two thefts? Who knows? I'm just telling you, this community, our friends and colleagues, my people are being systematically trounced by thugs! Who's to say Beach Hill won't be next? You've got to do something! Doesn't Beach Hill have a security system in place? The museum has a basic alarm system, but it's not exactly state-of-the-art. I've urged Joanna to approach the board about making some security upgrades, but she just keeps saying that the timing isn't right to ask for money. I understand your concern, but what can I do to help? We need your eagle eyes. We need your bat ears. We need you to sniff out the stink of trouble. <laughs> Some weird analogies. I'll uh, do my best, but it sounds like what you really need is a new breed of police dog. Don't play modest mouse with me. Modest mouse? Excuse me? Modest mouse? <laughs> Most people call me Nosy Parker. But anyway, tell me something about the art business. Is that a contemporary painting? You bet your socks it is. Would you believe I dug it up in my backyard? No, but I could humor you. 
I guess that would make the painting a genuine artifact. How about that rubber shark? The artist's name is Poppy Dada. She's a teenager in South Dakota. The art world is going bananas over her stuff. I'll unload that one for some serious dinero. Let's go with Joanna this. says you performed an act of wizardry in helping Beach Hill acquire the Pakal carving. Getting those provenance docks together was a pig and a half. Oh, they're on the up and up, I assure you. But ah, uh, to have been at the height of my career back before the crackdown, those were the days. A pig and a half? Maybe sometime I'll tell you a sad story I call How Mexico Lost Its Sense of Humor. Not today, though, Nancy. Alejandro says you're unethical, a modern-day conquistador, that you're robbing Mexico of its cultural history. <laughs> and I say Alejandro is the real bully of the playground, a lunch money extortionist who loves nothing more than to see the other boys and girls go hungry. When you sell a piece of art, what kind of commission do you get? Standard, 10%. It's no king's ransom, unless of course you sell something for a million bucks. Too bad I'm not allowed to put that monolith on the market, huh? Hmm. I'd better get going. Keep up the good work. That does not look like a rubber shark. It looks like something else. Like a glove or something. Oh, no, that's the shark. Okay. But this looks like something else. Okay, well, let's get out of here and let's head to the museum. Oh. <sighs> Gotta start our work anyway. We'll make sure that we're there and Joanna has nothing to complain about. And we want to let her know that we gave the papers to Alejandro. Good thing Franklin gave me the museum key. Seriously? Who's here? How are the tasks oh, coming shoot. along? Scared the crap out of me. Do you think Alejandro would go to extreme measures, like stealing, to reclaim Mexico's artifacts? Who knows? Okay. When did Henrik come on board? I got an email from him one day saying he heard the news about Beach Hill getting the monolith. He said he'd drop everything to come here and translate those glyphs. He was even willing to take a pay cut. What could I say except, giddy up, you're hired. <laughs> Where was he working before? At the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center in New Mexico. Really? Where have I heard that before? Why did you become a museum curator? I became a curator because I want to help make artifacts available to as many people as possible. That's all that matters, isn't it? Unless you're Alejandro Del Rio. Okay. I've got work to do. Semper ubi sabubi. Whatever the heck that means. I keep thinking that there's something else we need to look for in here, but I'm not finding anything. Okay. Probably be later. Alright, so let's uh, head back here. And, oops. There we go. Hey, he's not here. Interesting. Now, let's uh, get on to this list. Took care of that. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and order the bubble wrap and such. So, this is 202-555-9963. what we're supposed to be getting. Wait a minute. Maybe I think I might have it. You have no Okay. Five 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 nine nine six three. Let's try doing it that way. Because this would be a local number. Silvio's curatorial bonanza. There we go. Let's, 
May I speak to Silvio Jr., please? This is Silvio Jr. What can I do for you? I'd like to place an order, please. Have you ordered from us before? We have an account number. Well, I haven't personally, but the museum has. Okay, good. That saves me a lot of paperwork. What's the account number? BH-119K. BH-11... BH-119K? Beach Hill? Are you serious? That's right. That's right. I'm the new deputy curator, Nancy Drew. Well, whoop de doo It's Nancy Drew. But Silvio's curatorial bonanza no longer does business with Beach Hill. I've sent all six of the outstanding invoices to a collection agency. And you jokers won't get another packing peanut out of Silvio Jr. ever. Do not call here again. Ooh. Okay. Well, in that case, let's go let Joanna know that... What the heck was that? Beach Hill's been hit! Sit tight, Nancy. The police are on their way. Okay... What just happened? Okay, yeah, we get it. What the fudge? I should talk to Joanna before I touch anything. Okay, well, we have our first scarlet hand, I guess. Uh, Joanna? Come in. Someone has cooked up my worst nightmare and served it to me on a plate. I'm sorry about the theft, Joanna. It must be a terrible loss for the museum. That's the understatement of the year. Did the police find any clues around the display case? The police took some samples for the crime lab, but they couldn't promise any overnight results. So if you want to put your little magnifying glass up to the scene, it's fine with me. Great. I'll let you know if I find anything. Go to it. Alright, well, I guess we can't let her know about the, uh, reordering stuff. Alright, let's, uh, go and check this out. Oops, hold on. Get this one. Huh. This looks like something you'd see in the museum, though. That's... Oh, yeah, that's a jade artifact. Okay, it looks like that's all that's missing. Weird. Okay. Whoops, wrong one. Ah! Getting turned around here. There we go. Alright, is Henrik here? No, he is not. Oh, interesting. Let's, uh... I need to find another piece. Seriously? Okay, so I guess we can't do that yet. Alright, well, let's, uh, go to the list here. Alright, well, I guess I don't have to worry about that. Match recorded... Okay, so we need to figure that part out. Let's try doing these uh, recordings. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, that's not it. Here we go, we got a recording here. Maya Scribes recorded the official history of the kings and queens, but very little is known about daily life in the Maya world. Although there are thousands of inscriptions found on artifacts and architecture, there are only a handful of Maya books in existence today. Hmm. Okay, so that one seems correct. Strange supernatural creatures, sometimes called monsters, played an important role in Maya mythology. These monsters were often associated with the earth, caves, or mountains. Okay, well that is not, that is not, uh, correct. Okay, here's another one. The date on this slab uses the Tzolkin, or Divine Calendar, made up of 20 weeks each with a named okay. day. that's not it either. 
So let's try this one. The Maya ball game was a religious activity okay, as that one's correct. So we found two that are incorrect and two that are correct. Okay, this is like a Lady Zach Cook ruled Palenque before her son ascended the throne in 615 CE. Maya tradition required that the kingship be handed down from father to son, but Lady Zach Cook broke this custom by establishing herself as a deity. This gave her the power to justify the new royal lineage. Because his mother had been deified, Pakal often referred to himself as the first true king. Hmm. The Maya were pantheistic, believing in many gods who ruled over different aspects of Maya life. Okay, that would be correct. Uh, the only thing is I'm not sure how to swap them. What's this? Nancy, something's come up and I'll be gone for a bit. Your mission in the meantime Run through the temple activities to verify that all questions can be answered based on info available elsewhere in the museum. We don't want a little rascal rebellion on our hands when the exhibit opens. Uh, now do we? Be back ASAP. Thanks, Henrik. Huh. Okay. Check voicemail often. Oh, I'd already checked that earlier. Uh, reorder my numbering exhibit. I'd better check to see if I'm done with that. Okay, well, how do we do that? Hmm. Well, I guess let's check this room out and see if this is where we do the recording stuff. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so we know how to find that now. Hey, looks like we got another project we can do here when the time comes. Ceramic. Okay. So let's go verify the number of the exhibit. I'm not seeing where the numbers are for the rows. I don't understand that. So let's go talk to Joanne and see how we're supposed to do that. Come in. Because I don't remember. Need something? Okay, I'll share the chars. So the narrations. Here we go. I'm not sure what to do with those exhibit narrations. Henrik can help you with that. Well, I can't do that because he's not here. Have you seen Henrik? I found a piece of paper inside the Pakal display case. It had some glyphs on it, and a print of a red hand. I'm hoping he can give me a translation. What am I, fish food? Henrik's not the only one around here who can read a glyph, you know. Sorry, Joanna. I thought I was supposed to go to Henrik with all my glyph questions. The police showed me the note. It said, the magician suffers yellow death, whatever that means. Apparently, the thief just couldn't come up with the glyphs for, the curator suffers flaming purple disgrace. I'm curious about the red handprint the thief left. Does it have any significance in Maya culture? Afraid I can't help you there. What I want to know is what the hand was printed with. It's obviously not finger paint. Why don't you do a little analysis on it in the lab? Okay. I haven't seen Henrik since the theft. Where do you think he could be? Who knows? Hmm. Hmm. That is gorgeous. That's one of the Mayan temples. Great Plaza of the... something. Guatemala? I think. Alright. Let's get down here. We'll run on over to the lab. Since apparently Henrik has to help us with the numbering, or with the recording stuff. And let's, uh, let's do this. Do not operate without permission. Okay, please insert sample and press start. Alright, we want to put this here. 
Close that and hit start. Let's see what we come up with. Okay, I've got a graph of the chemical used for the handprint. Now I've got to match it up with a known substance. Okay. So how do we do that? Uh, compare. HGS. That doesn't work. Alright, so let's see, there's a chemical table over here. And according to this chart, mercury. HG stands for mercury. Interesting. S stands for sulfur. So the handprint was made from mercury and sulfur. Need something? I did okay. the chemical analysis you suggested. That red hand was printed with a compound containing mercury and sulfur. Does that mean anything to you? Sure, sure, cinnabar. The Maya would rub it into their most important carvings to add definition to the artist's lines. Really? Where would a person get a supply of cinnabar? We use cinnabar here at the museum the same way the Maya did, to keep things as authentic as possible. Henrik orders those kinds of supplies, but we've been out of stock for quite a while. The last I heard, there was some kind of holdup with the distributor. And looks like that's I've it. I've got work to do. Carpe diem. All right, so since we've got that done now, let me check our time. How much time do we got left? Oh, yeah, we don't. We're almost out of time. So we're probably, I'm thinking we're going to go ahead and end this off here because we can't reorder anything uh, uh, for the packing material and such because of a misunderstanding or whatever with the finances. And the only task left that we can do since Henrik is missing is to run through the games up here um, that he, uh, Henrik asked us to do to verify that they all work. From what I'm understanding, let's say there's one and two. So there's two different um, things. What in the world is this? Okay. So um, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and leave this episode here. On the next episode, we will be messing with these computers and getting the information needed to uh, continue and everything. Yeah, because we can't go under there yet. And, uh, anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new and like to see more content by myself. And if you guys are looking for cheaper phones and phone accessories, be sure to check out Tip for Tat Chit Chat. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. And until next time, guys, I hope you all had fun, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!